good morning everyone. The presentation is about Calpro. If I break on the if my net is weak, kindly let me know. So the product <coughs> is a, a product of a performator. And just to have a bit of background on what we do, uh, because luckily I'm having to present a product that uh, we developed within the company where I have been working for the last seven years. And um, what you can see there is other things that we do so that you're able to bring in the dimension of how then did Calpro come in. Their economics uh, for the agronomy, carbon construction and designing, dairy financial management, dairy husbandry, hard management, which basically includes manual recording and software. So this summarizes the things that we have been doing as a company. Um, good. You can see on the on the right side you can, uh, how we we work. On one side, we work at the farm level projects. That is when a farm a farmer comes in and says or maybe an investor who is just starting up daily and says, uh, can you do this for me? Can you set up the farm for me? Build a barn for me? Or, you know, whatever needs a farmer might have. We call them farm level projects or commercial services projects. Then up there is a sector level. This has to do with the projects that consult performance to say that we want to do this at the sector level policy, uh, supporting huge numbers of cooperative members so we operate in those two levels mainly and what is now growing faster is the commercial services so calpro came to enhance this particular area on management of the herds and i'll be explaining why did we then have to start calpro uh, what do we face so that we can begin to look out for a solution in a software as a as a background introduction uh, like i said is a product of uh, which is a data advisory and consulting company, now seven years, so we started in 2013. And this software was developed last year, that is 2018. Um, and we have been offering consultancy services, like most of you who are in consultancy, uh, you begin with very few skills and services, but as you grow, you begin to understand the problem of your client, and you now know what kind of products to develop. So it is in the sixth year of our work that we now began to go digital on most of our services. So among the services that we offered, one of the most requested service was something we call the dairy farm benchmark, uh, popularly internally known as DFB, by those who have, who have uh, come across it, which was developed in 20, late 2014. And uh, this product assesses the performance of a farm. So for you to ask for this, you have to have a dairy farm operating. So we come in and we spend, uh, spend a few hours, uh, a number of consultants, someone in agronomy, someone in uh, husbandry, someone in economics, someone in health, you know, uh, a group of consultants spend like a day on your farm. Mostly it has to be a farm that has at least 20 cows milking and a total herd of um, about, um, if, you are, if you're milking 20 cows, you at least have a total count of more than 30 animals on the farm. So farms that are smaller than that might not find fun, uh, value uh, from a DLP because the amount of money they pay versus the, the, the cost, I mean, the, the value they get. Because a farm which is too small might not have all the departments or all the functional areas that we assess. So if you have 14 areas being assessed and only six are active in your farm because it is too small and the others are blank, then you don't get value for the service. So in the benchmark, we began to realize that most of the farmers didn't have data. So you're asking, what is the average production of your cows? Uh, we don't know. What is the calving interval? How, how long do your cows take between one bath and the other? I don't know. At what bath rate are your cows born? I don't know. Uh, at what age has your heifers inseminated? I don't know. Now, when you have so much missing in the farm, it becomes very difficult for you to make targets for that farm. 
So we started by issuing what you call manual recording templates to some farms. Of course, it was too possible to give advice on the basis of what we call a judgment by expert opinion. Just look and say, I don't think these cows are eating enough. I think these cows have a long calving period. You just use your expertise to make some judgment, which is largely uh, what we can call, um, I would say it's, you're, you're observing and interviewing, but you're not verifying because there's no books present to verify from. So the three areas or the three methods used to get data when you're doing a benchmark on the farm is observation, interview, and verification. So you can do observation and interview, but when you ask to verify, then you're asking, can I see where you wrote when this cow gave birth? Can I see where you wrote when you weighed this cow when she was born? So we realize that we are not getting our way around there. So what we do, we introduce the, the manual records and we train the people on the farms to begin to write down with a pen on a book, uh, all these things that we need. So that when we come, our advisory services are more professional because we can say, look, your cows are taking 700 days before they give birth. Can we now begin to work around how they can take 380 days before they give birth? You can already see that I'm talking about KPIs in a dairy farm. But if this person does not have any data, then you don't know whether they have a short calving interval or they have a long one. You really have no basis of professionalizing your service. And when you come back to the office, you are not able to tell that story of that farm in numbers. So by giving the manual record, you are of recording. When they learn how to record, then it's easier now to say, can we now digitize the recording practice in this farm? But in the first place, they know how to record. Some of the manual records that we gave out, uh, the, the ones at the top are more financial. You can see the revenue record, you know, sales, milk, heifers, cow to cows, manure, whatever you're selling, payment expenses record, uh, the things that you're having to buy, the cow health record. So these are all books with the hardcover, stock record, basically recording the, the feed, you know, bags of, of dairy meal, uh, bales of lucerne, bales of hay, and so on. We have the calf weight record from the birth weight all the way to the time that this uh, cow leaves the farm. I mean, but for this one, we stop at the time the hay is inseminated. So that uh, from there now, we only do, um, we only do purposeful weighing just for feeding purposes. But for calf weight, it is that to determine the rate at which the calves are growing. And then you have the breeding record, which is perhaps one of the most important because it carries nearly half of all the dairy farms KPIs are on that book. So for all the farms that got this book, one of one book was costing 1,000 shillings. You would have a whole, the only book that is missing here is milk record. Nearly all the farms had a milk record in as much as we also have one. But farms had a way of recording milk because that is where the payment was, the payments were being made from. So they would, not, they would not be able to determine how much money they have paid by the cooperative or whoever is buying milk. It was their, it was their only reconciliation document, but the others were not there. So that's the only document that I did there. Yeah? It's a bit of a long document, a template. So yeah, you see now we, we were not um, completely stuck here, but again, we also did not want to force farmers to leave the manual recording. As long as they can do manual recording, they only go to the digital records when they are ready. So CowPro, the look and feel, when you go to App Store, this is how it looks. Uh, you see something like this, CowPro, you have a uh, manager solution, and um, then if you log in, if you download and you have a way of getting in there, this is what you see on the on your screen. So these are the icons that you click, and when you click, you go in and you find a lot more details on every department. So later on, I'll be explaining what is unique about the product, and ideally, I just want to inform. I'm also avoiding the temptation of marketing because, I mean, for now, you know, I'm having to present a product that I, I, I prepared, an idea that I came up with. So I, I also get into the temptation of, uh, of uh, marketing it. So dashboard, the records of the animals, the milk, fertility, health. Uh, you can see some financials there. Uh, what is here now? I think is something blocking. Uh, yeah, then we have reports. Reports, those are many reports. Every icon has their own report. Then we have notifications and we have the buy feeds. When you see that buy feed, it means that a farmer who has uh, this mobile app 
when they click there, they are taken to this website uh, where they can be able to, I hope I'll be able to, yeah, I don't know whether it's in there. Good. When they, when they click that, this is what they find. Uh, ignore the video for now, but you come here. This person can either buy for the growing for them. They can also book mail silage. And there are also other services, like these are uh, learning on video. They can buy the daily books. There are so many things they can do. Uh, they, can, they can ask for cow pro. They can buy cows. They can ask for a manager. They can ask for a band design. They can ask for minerals. They can buy daily equipment. They can also ask to be guided, to be, to be taken for a tour in a dairy farm, or even students can ask for attachment through it. They can buy a cow, they can buy, they can, uh, they can hire a contractor, they can also look for milk. So this, uh, let me close this. So this, this uh, click takes them to the marketplace so that if their feeds according to their stock record are diminishing and they need to replenish, then it is easier to just stay on, to say next week, I need one ton, or I need 10 tons of maize silage. That if they don't need to call anybody, that order will record on the on our site. So the objectives and the benefits help not make objectives of the uh, and promote a data-led decision making in the in the farms. What was happening, and uh, perhaps as you know, is that we have now a very fast rate of um, uh, the, the commercial farms are emerging at a rate much higher than when we, we began. And most of these farmers are not present at the farm. They are what we call telephone farmers. They are doing other jobs, but they appear on the farm once a week or once in two weeks. So when they come and see something happening, they just say, can we sell this cow? Or can you do this? In fact, in most cases, we don't have a problem with someone selling a cow because they don't like it. What we have is people keeping a cow for too long, yet the cow is not productive. So we're looking, is it possible to support this investor with some data so that they can be able to make nearly all their decisions based on the data collected at the farm. Now, for the manual record, we have one limitation. You could record, but there was no analysis. So your manager would say, this calf was born at, at 40 kilos. Now she is 50 kilos. She has added 10. But that's not the end. Ideally, she should tell us, uh, is 10 the right uh, weight gain for a month? Or should it be more? Should it be less? Then what should I do to, to get the right weight? So. Manual record had a big challenge because analysis was not happening. So we didn't meet the objective of recording with the manual record. So with CowPro, the farm is able to do the following. See all the farm data on the phone or tablet. Track the farm performance across all the KPIs. We have more than 80 KPIs on that software. We started with about 17. We kept adding. Uh, we now have more than 80, although some of them are locked because not all farms are requiring all those KPIs. So to generate farm reports, when you go to buy a heifer in a certain farm, and someone says, I'm willing to give you $2,000 for this heifer, but can you give me the record of the mother of this heifer? If you have this software, you can be able to pull out the record of the mother, and you can be able to see this was a big performance on milk production for the mother of this heifer, and therefore I can buy this heifer this much and not this much, because you can be able to see the history of the parents of that uh, heifer, because heifers are marketed based on their parents. Not, not entirely on their own profiles. So you can also book and buy fodder, like I've explained. You can make uh, timely corrective decisions on the herd. You can, uh, basically, you can sell the car at the right time to the butcher. You can be able to, to uh, you know, stop a heifer from uh, a calf from growing slowly and get back to the right weight gain. You can also reconcile new production records with the sales records. You can preserve the history of the animals, thereby making it uh, so that you're able to make profiles market your heifers, because nearly all the data farms are not just selling milk. They are also having a very attractive business front by selling heifers. So the challenge of adoption, the challenges of adoption, and I'm thinking this is a very good area for, for further research, uh, recording as a routine is not well adopted, and uh, is not a well adopted practice in the farms. So even with manual recording, farms uh, record a lot less than they should. So you see a lot of incomplete records, inaccurate records. Uh, people just don't want to write something. They just want to do things without writing, without writing anywhere. Uh, so we had that challenge where you are telling people about CowPro and they are, and they are telling you, but we only had one book for milk. How, where do we start? So for such ones, we, for such ones, we would say, can you do some manual recording for six months before we go into the digital recording? Then farmers are not able. Farms are not able to employ an extra person to support on the data. Um, on the data part. 
So most farms will probably have only the, they'll probably only have uh, the, the guy who is the manager, but will not employ an extra person to purely uh, focus on, on recording. So this also could actually be attributed to the fact that farmers, uh, farms need to make a margin. So when they introduce a new cost, it becomes very complicated and they need to remain afloat. Then three, due to limited computer skills, the farms tend to call very frequently for assistance. Things that they could do for themselves, they call for assistance. I, I'm not getting this um, page loading, please can you come? So you end up seeing that the cost for supporting them are very high. Then also CowPro promotes uh, transparency at the farms and some workers thrive in chaos. This is to say that um, you go to a farm where managers ask for money to inseminate a cow, I mean a heifer or a, or a cow, and uh, you send them money because maybe the owner is a doctor, he's just entering the theater and he's saying, okay, that cow is on heat, we don't miss that heat, sends about 5,000 or 6,000 for sex semen. The guy puts the money in the pocket, does not inseminate that cow. So you end up finding that a cow has had 14 hits without a successful insemination. So either there was no insemination at all, or they were given a conventional uh, semen and they were supposed to be sex semen. So without that tracking, uh, then the owner is not able to know what's going wrong. But in the tracking, then the managers who like chaos or who benefit from chaos, they tend to assist the efforts of uh, making a transparent system on the farm. Then uh, most of the farms employ animal production people. But if you go to the curriculum of the health, uh, health uh, assistant or vets or animal production graduates or animal science graduates, they have very little of business skills trained within their course. They may do some computer courses. I think that has become a nearly a mandatory courses uh, in universities or in, in colleges. But especially those guys who are employed on the farms, who are mostly diploma or certificate holders, they don't have management or business skills trained to them during their course. The, the, the course is biased heavily on health of the animals and breeding. So telling them to reason out that when you record here, then you're able to make this decision, that whole chain of uh, actions to be able to see the end of the action they are being asked to do becomes very difficult. And, and like, like I said, you can't have two managers, uh, one doing the business end and strategy and marketing, the other one doing the animal health and, and heart management. You can't afford them. The farm will make a loss. Then, of course, the absence of the right gadgets at the farms. Uh, a farm is showing interest, but none of the workers has a smartphone and the farm has no computer. So they have to start from buying gadgets, getting out how to know how to use them, and so on. So those are the challenges that we saw. Which other technologies do we have in the region um, that are more like CowPro? Smart Cow, I think that's quite uh, popular in Kenya. Uh, the only difference between Smart Cow and CowPro is that Smart Cow, we can call it a basic uh, hard management software without KPIs. But it's very good. For most farmers, we just want basic recording. These are very good software. Uh, and I think the only challenge with, I would say that for Smart Cow, the owner of Smart Cow is not a daily guy, is a, is an ICT person. So even if he was, I think he did very well to have come this far. And now it would require a person who does daily to be able now to come in and include now the KPIs. So KPIs make it a more detailed and a more daily like software. But Smart Cow has come earlier, came earlier and did very well. Even from Agri, came before Smart Cow, but didn't pick the Dutch software. Uh, I think the farmers in Kenya, first of all, found it too expensive. Um, then also a lot of areas that farmers didn't need, more like too much information. But now it has come again. We have now a request to be dealers, but we're still discussing that. Uh, much cheaper, nearly 100 times cheaper. I think they have now thought about it again. Now they just don't want, uh, it's not about money, so it's about getting data of how the African farms are, are, are performing and what kind of needs they, are, they, they have. So I think they have changed the objective of um, this software in, in East Africa. Other than now making sales, it's perhaps something else, uh, which is not bad. We have Daily Life, uh, which is American. There are people who are using it in Kenya. So there's a dealer here in Kenya who installs. Again, more like Smart Cow, a lot of the data is well kept. But if you want to go into targets and KPIs, or if you want to go to details of fertility-oriented uh, KPIs, then it does not go that deep. But, but it keeps data, and farmers seem to be happy. We have Digical, 
uh, Digicow has also been doing this, more like SmartCow. We have Ilunda. Ilunda is in Uganda. Um, Ilunda is in Uganda. I found it in Uganda. But again, the Ilunda guy is more of a management consultant, so it has a lot of bias towards finance. Uh, I think he was more like keeping records on expenses and sales. And then he says, can we also have, uh, 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 include the hard data? So all the animal record is just one icon for animals. The other icons are for finances. And then we have the report. So we can say in terms of the core daily subject, Ilunda is, is very basic. Uh, do we have any other? I think those are the ones that we have that are being used. To, okay, we have also Milky. Uh, not sure why this one is here. We have Milky from Israel. Which one is uh, the, this Milky? They don't sell Milky on, the, on its own. It's if you buy their van, their Milky parlor, then you have their software. And I think that is also what Dilaval are trying to do. Get from Agri, the mother company is Dilaval. If you buy their milk, their, their milk impala, then they are able to integrate the milk impala with the software so that you can have their milk impala and have another software. Because then the software can be able to pick its own data from the cows as they walk into the milk impala. So a bit a bit advanced because of the integration. So Milky and has been doing that already from Israel um, and then used from Agri uh, from the Netherlands. Then we have others. Others, I mean. Uh, there are people who, maybe they are, your son is a, an IT person, then you challenge your son, you guys are going to be the ones taking up the farm after me, and you try and think about how we can record this data. So they begin with Excel, the next thing you hear is they have made a, a software that they can be able to use only on their own farms. They are not commercialized, but they are just made for the for the farm. So why am I not able to move on? Yeah, I can see Milky is there. Good. So improvements for CowPro and customizations. Yeah, first of all, I would say that... Uh, so uh, CowPro is the latest software in the region and uh, is most details on KPIs and most comprehensive on the fertility section. In fact, when we, when we, talk, uh, when we talk about uh, CowPro, we, we market it on the edge of how, how that it is on the fertility issue. And fertility is a nightmare in nearly all the dairy farms. Fertility is a big issue. But then it still has room for improvement and I think a lot of room for that. And the first one would be to reduce input efforts and embrace the self-detecting abilities uh, through introduction of transponders in the herd. I mentioned that about uh, Milke and about uh, from Agri. When you put transponders into cows, then you don't have to record um, the cow's weight. The cows will be weighed and the data can be relayed to the, to the software without you having to record. Once we, we remove that element of having someone recording, then you also have much less errors and with the level of effort is also reducing a little bit. Because the guys can now focus on taking care of the cows instead of having to spend all their time recording. So that integration for CowPro is not done, but there are some softwares that have already managed to do that. So that means that most of the data for the cow, including new production, can go into the software without anybody having to read and write. Then two, the application uh, among smallholders, the mass market. How do we ensure that the smallholders can also get to use this? For now, it favors the commercial farmer who, has, who is milking 20 and above. But is this also possible to have uh, people like uh, young extension people using it to, to manage like 50 farms? So the farmers are not recording, but that guy is recording for them. And you can be able to see all those farm records on one screen. That is more like cluster management of, uh, of farms. And they can be able to see which farm has an issue, which farm needs help. And the guy can now take his bike and go to that farm because he can be able to master uh, or, or to dispose all the farms on one screen. The three is the advanced analytics, where the system is able to compare farms and, and the outliers are highlighted for attention. I think Dr. Mujibi had uh, this uh, kind of software. It was, it was purely doing that. I didn't know whether to include it among the softwares that we have because for him it was more trying to compare the performance of various genetics because he's, he's a genetics uh, expert in, in livestock. So it compares uh, how, how, how much are the cows, uh, the jerseys in Laikipia versus the jerseys in, uh, in, in uh, North Rift? And wh why, are they, why are they producing differently? So we also need that kind of analytics where farms that are in the same region and using nearly the same breeds, which farm has a serious outlier, I mean, is it, so different from the others, either because the calves are born too small or they are, they are inseminating too late, or the production is significantly lower than the others or higher than the other. Those kind of uh, highlights should come if the software is able to compare. All the farms that have been able to subscribe, we can be able to see that, that data and it can show us the various differences. Then the other one is the 
and the notification uh, I have seen in the Netherlands, uh, some of these softwares are able to text the owner. You know, the car is on heat, the, the software detects, and then you get a text. The owner gets a text, uh, cow on cow, this and this on heat, and also the, the vet gets a text. So whoever gets the, this text first can be able to call the other, and the cow is inseminated on time. So the ability of the, the software, instead of just showing a red dot there that there's a notification, can it further and send a text to the person who is concerned about that notification? If it's a hit, then the vet. If it's a, a, a health issue, the vet. I mean, there are there are different people uh, who can who can be notified. But in all cases, the owner's number is is, uh, is given, and and can send to the text, the normal text, or to the WhatsApp. And then finally, is the integration with other apps that monitor data that is relevant to the daily. For example, the weather app. The daily news, if there's a, a communication by the government that you need to vaccinate again, put a mouth, then the app is able to pick from the other app of government or the Ministry of Livestock or the app on weather warning the owner that we have you need to stock up, we are going to, to a cold season and nearly all the folders are going to stand. So that integration with related apps which are relevant to the for daily sector, that I think is a critical improvement. And now I go to the final section where we are saying where do we get more information on CowPro. Our website uh, has that. Then we also have the second one is the link on the second dot is uh, on the second bullet is a video just explaining the product, but including CowPro. And the third one, this link explains about the many apps that are being, being used in daily and the dynamics about the challenges of adopting these apps. By the time this study was done, the CowPro was not was still under development. So we used this study to be able to prepare ourselves on what kind of challenges we, we might face in adoption and how to better enter the digital softwares, uh, the softwares market. The last thing I would say is that the cost is a, is a 20,000 shillings for installation, unless the farm is too far in that case, then the logistical costs are added, and then 6,000 shillings every year as the annual subscription. And then we have the help desk uh, anytime a farmer can call and get their issues sorted out. Thank you very much. That's the end of the presentation of help. I hope you enjoyed the presentation that only demonstrates the importance of keeping records in a cow farm or any other farm for that matter. Thank you for watching.